right, everybody. Uh, let's get the Water Rates Committee meeting of Thursday, October the 18th underway. So, um, with that, we'll start with introductions real quick. Uh, Raymond Shirsky, General Manager, NID. Marvin Gates, Finance Manager. Lauren Oast, Oast Ranch, and Farm Bureau. NID, Division 3 as well. Bob Gore, representing District 2. John Norton, Division 5. Dave Barheit, Rancher. Willie Bruce in District 1, Volunteer. <laughs> Nancy Weber, MID Board, Division 1. Um, Mike Borga, uh, Nancy's representative, or one of them. Uh, Chris Durlagan. Sorry. Chris Durlagan, uh, Division 2. Pat Miller, Division 3, Director. Uh, Kaylin Hart, District 4. Chris Tapanian, Board Secretary. Bruce Henry. Otis Wallen. Ricky Heck, Division One. Diana Suarez. Stephanie Curran. Everybody in high school student. Everybody in high school student. Yay! <laughs> nice work. Jeff Post, Water Operations, NID. Greg Jones, Assistant General Manager, NID. Ralph Remick. <coughs> All right. Uh, we got some questions from Director Weber. Chip, do you want to take those on the fly for? We didn't produce them, Nancy. They're not. This is more easier if we address them completely, I think. So it's going to be verbal but not written? Yeah. These are, these are a little more intricate than. than okay. And those are not just for me. Uh, those are also from Bob Moore and Lord Jerusalem. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. So comments. Uh, moving from a base rate factor of 45 to 55 percent in the first year will make a hardship on many users. The model notes an 84 percent increase in monthly bills for first year. The question was: Can we look at spreading the 10 point increase in the base rate over a five year period, basically two points a year? And the answer is yes, um, but this will require adjustments in the consumptive rate as well because you're not making up that big leap in the first adjustment. So do you have a um, showing for us of, as you did with what we got mailed? Can Basically you, you want to run a model with the yeah, different run the model. variables. That's correct. Right. We can mm -hmm. do that. We can do that. Okay. Um, can we look at raising the base rate to 50% and usage rate to 50% and spreading the five point raise in the base rate to 1% a year for five years? The answer is yes. And again, we can play with that in the model. Um, to explain the base rate usage rate structure to the broader public and there is a risk of it seeming like a hidden charge. How would we explain this in simple language? Great question and a good challenge. Um, we'd have to lean on the consultant team to, to help us with very common sense language that makes sense to our customer base so that they can grasp what we're trying to do here. I think we need to do more than just get the consultants to do it. I think so. Probably a board member needs to be involved at least one. And I'd volunteer for that. Okay. Uh, the 4% increase in usage portion of rate can seem deceiving when the actual increase can be much more. Please work on explanations for these solutions. We will do so. Kind of the same guy. Uh, how important is it to raise the base rate? Should we continue to work on this? Or is it not worth the additional decision making? Well, as we talked about early in this process, the base rate is very important to the district in times of drought, um, times of reduced consumptive use, basically really hurts the revenue side of the district. And so most of the agencies in California are switching to a more even split and some are even going completely the other way with a higher base rate than a consumptive rate. Um, our, our costs to run the district are not going down, but water usage is. So something has to give somewhere. But <coughs> don't you have a reserve for the down years? I mean, there's, there's, there's fat years too when you have a lot more water going out. So I mean, I can understand the reason for wanting to have a larger percentage that's fixed, 
But nonetheless, that's a big impact on the smaller users. Yeah. So, um, to, to your argument, and, and, and it also, well, one of the things that we didn't talk about last time, but Mike, is it also is, is, it extends equitability equity into the commercial industrial accounts as well. Right now, the commercial industrial accounts are also carrying that fixed rate on the low side, right? A commercial industrial account is only going to have very little that's, that's proof. That's proof. That's so. proof. The other thing I'd like to point out is you mentioned that we have fat water years. We do, but you have to realize our revenue doesn't really change. Uh, just because we have a wet year and, and lots of water storage, our incoming revenue does not change. Our customer base doesn't really change. So that's why you have a reserve also built into your structures so that when you do have those down years, you have the revenue to come out. That's what reserves are for. I agree, and, and we used that reserve during the last drought and basically whittled it down to nothing. Now, if we have another drought that comes on the heels maybe next year, we're, we're, we're behind. And I can understand. I, I think I, I you've got a good point. I understand when it does rain a lot, like we had 100 inches a couple of years ago, you're not selling more water because of that. Mm -hmm. I, I guess I get that. Yeah. But nonetheless, not every year is, is is going to be in the drop mode. It's going to be, you know, weird where you do get a little bit more. Revenue. Do you sell some of that too? Well, we do have a reserve, the great stabilization reserve, and we redid the reserves last year. Uh, sources of money, uh, other criteria. So we don't have a way of funding that rate stabilization reserve right now. We did not plan for that. Right. But rather than just set a rate higher than we might need every year, it might be well to reestablish a funding source for the rate stabilization reserve. So the reserve refills as soon as the ONM is on the Okay. In, in the year when revenues come in over the O&M, whatever that surplus is, the first place it goes is in the rate stabilization account. That's the yeah, I tried to find that online, the reserve policy. Mm -hmm. I went through everything I could and I couldn't find it, so I have to there. find out. But I can, I can show you. Okay. So my suggestion would be that we reestablish a funding source beyond what we have now, so that we consider putting some hydro money in it. And that if we sell water on a district, it goes to that reserve. Okay, so that we have truly a rate stabilization <coughs> reserve, and then we try to keep the rates down six percent or less overall. So, what? may I? <laughs> <laughs> you know, when we talk six percent and this and this and this, but you know, here you look on some of these documents. On the last one I have, it says that the at the 55% base rate, it's going to be a 123% increase. Yeah. And, you know, when you look at that, and you look at the general public, you know, if somebody tells me I'm going to have a 123% increase in a portion of my bill, I'm going to go through the roof. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the real problem. <laughs> you know, if, if I'm paying $100, $150 a month for my water right now, Next year it's going to be 350 bucks, and that we have to solve that problem somehow. And yes, we have to have contingencies, <coughs> places where we can draw money. But I think it's going to be up to the new board to handle that in a voting capacity. So when, in other words, what we have, what we're doing here is we're saying. We want to take care of all of the problems now, and, and that's the way I'm. Uh, you know, just a private citizen. That's the way I'm looking at it. Sure. And I think that what we should do is allow the board, if there's a crisis, to then the public will know there's a crisis. There's not a crisis right now. What I'm saying is, if at a given time, let's say in two years. NID needs to raise the rates, then that board should have that authority then rather than having the rates now have a cushion built into them. And the only way you could do that is to re withdraw from a reserve. Right. Reserve you can't change running out of with the requirements. Yes. To and it. remember I asked at, at one of the previous meetings, you know, about the <coughs> 210 bill or whatever it is. Yeah. yeah. And to give the board the authority to stay within the law, 
that should be where the flux is. But something that it, as onerous as a, as a doubling a bill right now, I think uh, might not be popular with the public. <laughs> See, in other words, the authorities there in the future. And, and, I, and I'm struggling a bit with your description because ultimately the board has that authority every year when they set the budget. Uh, they can they can deviate from the original rate setting plan. They can't go above it. That's they what I'm saying. They can certainly go below it. And they have that prerogative yes. every year. Yeah. And, and what I'm saying is we, if, you know, I think it's critical to do the 210 proposition at a rate that basically is is a decisional reserve. Does that make sense? And that's what we had discussed at the previous meeting. Mm -hmm. right? Yes. We set a ceiling of 6% exactly. and the goal budget at 4%. Yes. Right. yes. And that didn't fly. I, I'd like to just chime in on what you said. I think the base rate increase of 83% by itself is, it puts the district at, well, it's the largest base rate in the survey they did. I don't know what it looks like statewide, but 123%, I think it's outrageous. And um, so I wouldn't recommend it. So what's that going to look like in dollar amount for base rate? So the base rate in the model that you were sent, and this was not, this was sent at a request. So the, right now it would be the monthly increase in 2019, the bill would go up $31.84. Yeah. And then from there out, the customers would see a $3.59 increase the next year, $3.17 the next year, $3.29 <coughs> so it's a front load. The way the shift is a front load. So it goes from a bi monthly of roughly 49 bucks to 100 bucks with 120% on the base rate. Goes from 24 to 55. Mm -hmm. Something comes along. Could I just? make a motion even though we don't have a formal meeting <laughs> that we discard the idea of the two percent uh, base rate I'm, I'm talking five points ten points it's up from 45 to 55 over that's I get the first year if we spread that over five years uh -huh. it would be more palatable it wouldn't give you as much up front uh -huh. We're going to look at it. Yeah, yeah we're going to move on. Yeah, right. So that, that kind of goes into the last question that you have here, Nancy, is can we split that up? And, and the answer is, yeah, let's, let's plug in the model and see what, see what happens. And I'd like to hear from Marvin and Rim, too, what the value of that is so that we know we don't make some kind of mistake. So we know what we're doing. Yeah. Um, I did miss uh, a meeting or two, so um, I've heard the 6% per year go out, and I've heard that earlier. But I do think when we get down to the final solution on rate, that we ought to look at the actual impact on the small user and the big users, mm -hmm. because what I'm afraid is it may not be, I don't think we want to tell the public to tell us around 6% per year, because it could be 15% per year for, for certain kinds of users, uh, and others may see less. But if, if, if the model is going to essentially shoot for 6% across the board, that's fine. But by switching, from, as we talked about a little bit, you, you said you had 37.5% fixed fee as of right now. Mm -hmm. So fixed is, a, is a, say, a third. Uh, and flow is two thirds. Now you're going to go 55. Well, if you went to 55 fixed, 45 flow. That's going to have a big effect besides just six percent on a small user. They're going to be paying more essentially. Yes. So what I'm getting at is that when we kind of get to settle down, we ought to have a way of just saying, <coughs> there's it's not just six percent across the board. It might be for the district, but for particular users, we want to be able to show this is what it is for the smaller user, the middle user, and the bigger user, just so bored and you all know what you're asking the public to pay. And I, and I guess I'm saying part of where I'm coming from is trying to dial back from a, a large fixed fee percent and get back to a maybe a more modest one. 
And right now you're you're more on the fixed than on the flow. The, the base rate um, the base rate is uniform. So in terms of a bigger or small user, it's uniform in terms of the the staff that you know just hired to get you have to serve it. You know it's a uniform rate. So for to be extended up against 218, you can't allocate the base rate based upon the size of the user that won't stand up against 218. So what we're saying is that the base rate is the uniform cost regardless if you don't use any one. It's the uniform cost that we have. It has to be spread uniform. It can't be spread based upon usage or it can't stand up. Understand. Yeah. 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 yeah, I understand. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So how is that reflected in the egg rate, the groundwater egg rate? They're uniform, just like yep. the uniform. So every every ag customer has a fixed fee for their for their 182 days, depending on which cycle they're in, winter or summer, and then they pay a per winer's inch charge, and it's flat. So. Okay, I missed that. Okay. Okay. So then, if um, the base rate for an ag user went up 15 or 20 percent. Yeah, no. 5%? No. So the ag users only see the 5% rate increase because their their overhead load is much less than so the tree and water cost. But I mean the base rate. Right. The base yes. rate only saw the 5%. In, in the model that you were sent in this, right. the base rate saw a 5% increase and the consumption <coughs> rate saw 5% increase. <coughs> because I think, you know, those raw water users, you know, look at the dollar amount, not the percent. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so they're going to see a $38 increase for a one miners inch customer in the first year and pretty much $40 on the way out. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm not, that's not completely true. We do look at the percentage, too, because in the past, we've always been used to a 4% increase. So, and I've actually talked to people, a 6% increase is probably, you know, probably do well. You know, we're not going to flip out over it. Well, in this one, in this model, it only been five. Yeah. So. so, what happened to the four percent that we when we all left here last week, and it was Willie's idea of a six maximum for two eighteen purposes, but do the four percent, and you said I can fly that airplane. What yeah. happened? So uh, there was a uh, director Miller was a little concerned about having that that concept and thought it was a little problematic, so we sent out uh, oh. a, a, this second one. So. It isn't that those. It isn't that this one supersedes that one. It was just no, that just to reflect the concern. Okay. Yeah. I'm just so curious. there was others that we had spoken to in this group that were interested in having something more that not to have this latitude. Willie's concept of start here, try to hold here, yeah. set it, and, and roll it. Thank you. Well, <coughs> Looking at page two of the, uh, the last thing that we've got at the very bottom, where it says the rate, it says treated base is 2483 and it goes to 5536 in one year. That's a pretty big jump. Raw right. water, hold on. Right, right, page, two. page two. Page okay. two. Yeah, right here. Um, the raw yep. water value for a minor's edge is at 284 and it goes to 299. Mm -hmm. That's not as big a rate increase, you're going to have to explain to me how the treated water people pay that big rate and the raw water people don't. So the difference in right. So so percentage wise accounts. So man, so we're 19,000 plus accounts that are treated water, 5,000 plus accounts that are ag water. The administrative load that ag presents the district is proportionally very small compared to the administrative load that the treated water customer presents. And so that percentage causes that differential. So if you have people have a lower rate then if you're looking at all of your customers, which you said you have to treat equally. We are. Because the treated water customers, the amount of infrastructure and the amount of work effort that goes into producing treated water is it goes a lot more than yeah, right. and so where our three of our customers are paying pennies on the gallon, the raw raw water customers are paying percentages of pennies on the gallon. Yeah, 
So we um we tested we tested Rem and I tested it. The the raw water customers pay about in this model they pay about twenty five percent uh, and the treated water customers pay about seventy five percent of the base rate coverage. And that's a close percentage in terms of the uh, the, the expenses to run the treated water system. When you look at engineering, what they're doing on treated water, when you look at uh, IT, finance, what they're doing all the customers, when you look at it as a whole, the raw water uh, side of the business is consuming maybe about 25% of it. And, that's, and it's set like this. And the, cost like this. and the cost of service study, the uh, NBS look at the transmission factor? Comparing between treated and raw, we have not there yet. They will. They will. Right now, we need the percentage for them to work with. That's what we're trying to accomplish. I would think that would be the basis to establish the percentage. No. So right, right now, what I need is I need this group to agree on kind of where where their tolerances are, and then I'll drive NBS.